Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about, and it's just a small point, um, but I wanted to get this in, is that fathers, you are responsible, or you are accountable, I should say, you are accountable for raising your children. Fathers are accountable to God for raising their children. And I really wanted to make this point because, um, you know, uh, sometimes as fathers, because we're out of work, and because, you know, you know if, if your wife is staying at home and raising your children, we often see that as the, the mother's responsibility. Um, you know, I've experienced this where sometimes I can go throughout, you know, a day or a week or a month and not really think about how the children are being raised because I'm, oh, that's, that's been handled by, by my wife and what have you. But really, you know, when you think about the fact that, and Victor brought this up last week, that, you know, husbands are the head of the wife. The, 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 the God-given responsibilities and roles that God has given us is for the father to be the head of the wife and by default that makes him the head of the family. Okay? Um, so, you know, we're out working. We may not necessarily see how our children are being raised, but we are accountable. God is holding us accountable um, for raising our children. And I'll just show you this here in Psalms 78, verse 1 to 5. It says, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. I think that's, that's um, prophesying Jesus Christ where he spoke in parables. But look at verse number three. Which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from, our, from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. Verse number five. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers. And by the way, before I read the rest of it, verse number five there. For he have established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. That's what we read in Deuteronomy chapter four. Okay, when God established these testimonies with Israel, which he commanded, look what it says here. It gives us a little bit more clarity, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children to their children. Okay, so this, uh, this is referring to the opening passage where it says that Israel were to teach their children. But here it gives us that further light that it's been commanded to the fathers. The commandment to teach our children was put upon the fathers of Israel. And I uh, look at verse number six and seven, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Okay. Now, I just want to show you another verse here in Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 1, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee, that thou mayest live long on the earth, and ye fathers, here it is again, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So we see that the responsibility of training children is accountable to the fathers. Yes, of course, the mother's going to be doing a lot more of the training because they're going to be at home with the children. But it is the fathers that was given the responsibility to train up the children in the ways of the Lord. I want you to keep that in mind because raising children is not just mum's responsibility. It is a, a partnership between the father and the mother to raise the child. I mean, it's just like a workplace, right? If you've got a manager, if, if you report to a manager, that manager is accountable for what happens. But then that manager might delegate responsibilities and tasks and make you responsible for carrying out what needs to be done. And so, as fathers, we're accountable to God for the raising of our children, but we will delegate that responsibility onto the mothers, onto our wives, to raise the children. Does that make sense? Just like a workplace where you have a manager and you have employees that, that, uh, that um, report into that manager. I mean, even think of Adam and Eve. You know, when, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, it was Eve that sinned first, wasn't it? It was, it was Eve that took from that tree that was tempted by Satan and took the fruit of that tree. But God, when he came down to speak to them, he came and asked Adam, what's going on? He held Adam accountable 
for what had happened within his own family. So, yes, you know, fathers, we are, we are heads of our wives, but we're also the head of our children, and we're, we're accountable to God by, with how our children are raised. So, yeah, don't leave it up to your wife alone. And the reason I want to emphasize this point is because I'm going to now show you some practical methods of tri child training. And what's most important about training children, I mean, you can have the best methods, but what I find that's going to be the most effective way of doing this is that there is consistency between mothers and fathers. Okay, how we raise our children ought to be consistent between how mum raises kids and how, how dad raises the kids. Okay, there ought to be agreement of how we raise our children. Uh, because, you know, consistency is the key. You know, children are very uh, perceptive at identifying inconsistencies between their parents. Children find the inconsistencies very easily. They don't just identify the inconsistencies, but they take advantage of them. And you might think back to your childhood. Think back to, to when you were raised by your mother and father. Um, I'm sure there were times that you would rather approach one parent over another for different reasons. If there was something you wanted, if there was maybe you wanted to eat you know, lollies or chocolate, you might, might approach one parent over the other because you know you get away with it uh, easier. So, you know, we've experienced that as children and, and this is why consistency is so important between mums and dads so your children don't take advantage of you. Uh, but, you know, even consider the Bible, consider God's word. You know, one reason that we know that we can trust God's word, one reason that, that we know that it's the perfect word of God is its consistency, is the consistency from, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. There are consistent themes. You know, scriptures can be compared with other scriptures. It's not like it's this contradictive book that, that has multiple gospels, multiple ways of salvation. No, you know, we know when you read the Bible as a whole, we know that salvation, the gospel, has always been by grace through faith on Christ alone. And whether that was in the Old Testament, as pictures of Christ, things that were being done in the Old Testament, or in the New Testament, now that we have received the fullness of the Word of God, the full revelation of the Word of God, salvation has always been the same. It's always been by grace through faith. And we know, and this is why we trust the Bible, because it is consistent, right? I mean, if we, if we read the Bible and we had 20 salvation plans, we wouldn't be trusting it. And so we understand that the Bible needs to be consistent because that's where we receive our instructions. And mum and dad, you need to be consistent with how you raise your children. It's the same principle. By being consistent, they're going to trust what you're saying to them. They're going to be more willing to obey because they know they can't get away with, with one thing or another. So it is crucial for mums and dads to work together and agree on training your children. And if, if you plan on getting married and you plan on having children, which you should, of course, then you, know, you, don't, you don't have to wait to have children to start talking about these things. I think it's probably best to, to work out what you want to do, how you want to raise your children, what rules and boundaries and, and guidelines you're going to have in place so that you know what's, what, what's ahead of you before you even have children. You're not trying to work that out after you have them. <clears throat> 